A very good afternoon to all of you. It's been a very entertaining session with all the music and I'm going to start talking. Well, I, I had a very good time. Did you all have a good time? Yes. All those had a good time are going to raise up their left hand. Guys, left hand. <laughs> okay, now. When I say the word now, I want you to put your hand down. Now. Okay. I was seven years old when I performed my first magic stage show. People were amazed to see a seven-year-old performing unbelievable feats and I was appreciated. My team and I traveled to various cities across the country for my performances. Now, during my performances, during my travels, I noticed a lot of people appreciated magic as an art. They appreciated me as a magician, as an artist. But also, there were a large number of people of my audiences who considered me to be the reincarnation of some miraculous soul or thought that I possessed some supernatural powers to do such unbelievable feats like flying in the air and levitating cars at such a tender age. They believed I could do anything by magic. I have actually got people coming up to me and asking me to solve their problems by magic. I have been asked to cure the sick, I have been, uh, and even find the culprit of petty crimes. <laughs> yeah, honestly. So, I mean, I was like 10, 11 years old, and at that time, I used to be surprised and confused to hear such words. I used to explain to them that magic is an art form, it's not some supernatural power. Some would understand, others would deny the fact. I have it's a very serious thing that I have personally met and know people who have taken advantage of this blind faith of the innocent and have become self-proclaimed godmen or women. I have got many such incidences in my life. I was in uh, Nasik, Maharashtra for a performance and after my show, uh, after my show, a middle-aged gentleman, very frail and weak, started up to me with great hope and belief and asked me to solve his numerous mental and physical illnesses through magic. He went on to put great emotional pressure of responsibility on me by saying that I was his last hope to live life. <laughs> now, not knowing what to do in a situation like that, all I did was I just magically made some water appear like this. I asked him, to drink it and he shall feel better. So, he drank. 10 minutes of uneasy silence and then he says, I am feeling better. <laughs> I was feeling better as well then. <laughs> Listening to this, I caused some more water to appear and poured it into a matka, an earthen pot, give it to him, and in a doctor-like tone, I asked him to drink two sips of it every day. <laughs> two sips in the morning and two sips before going to bed. I know it sounds quite funny and silly now, but this was all I could think of back then when I was like 13. A week later, I received a postcard from this person thanking me and saying that he's now feeling much better. I was surprised more than anyone else because I knew I had just given him plain water like what he would drink every day. After this incident, it dawned on me that we are living in a country where people have great faith in superstitions. And along with my performances, I started working on removing such beliefs from society and making them realize that it's, that it's all in the mind. Yes. Uh, by the age of 15, I thought to pen down my views into black and white. My book was published. It was out. I wrote many, books, many more books after that. I started giving out lectures and talks. I started conducting seminars and workshops and corporate training. I opened my center, a mind-nourishing clinic in Goa. During all this, I realized even highly educated people are trapped by their own belief system. And gradually I realized it's not just in India, but throughout the world. 
It's a very surprising thing which I've observed. It's a very, very, very important thing if you really give importance to it. It's about us. We believe in the power of the sun. We believe in the power of the moon. We believe in stars. We believe in the power of planets. We believe in rings and gemstones. We believe in black threads and red threads. We believe in the person coming on television and asking us to add an extra A in our name for success. We also believe in the person coming and telling us about our life, about our career, about our marriage. We believe in the stone kept at the junction and pray to it. We believe and worship animals. We believe in what is written about our, in our horoscope every morning in the newspaper. We believe in the tree outside our house, tie threads to it and make wishes. We believe in anything else. But we don't believe in ourselves. Surprising, isn't it? When I say such things, people come up to me or mail me claiming to have experienced supernatural phenomenon. I mean, uh, I've actually got this person who once came up to me and said, Suhani ma'am, although you don't believe in external past, but I've experienced it myself. I'm like, okay, tell me. I was a very short-tempered person. But from the time I've started wearing this moonstone ring, my temper has been curbed. It has come under control. Please tell me, guys. How has the temper come under control? Was it the power of the ring? Was it the power of the moon? Or was it the power of the belief that he had in that ring? What was it? Exactly, you know it. Remember, a power of belief is tremendous. If you believe in something, that thing will work for you. But the power was never in that thing. The power was in the belief that you gave to that thing. So, a belief system is extremely powerful. Remember, our thoughts become our beliefs and our beliefs become our reality. So, remember, what you believe is what you are. What you think is what you believe. What you think is what you see. And what you see is what you think. Just like my spectacles. Just frames, no lenses. So as I said, it does not mean what, it does not matter what the real, real reality is. If you think about something, your thoughts turn into your beliefs and your beliefs automatically turn into your reality. And the same concept makes magic happen. Many people ask me, what is magic? I've been asked almost 40 times over here already. Now, I have many answers to that. Magic is an art. Magic is a game of words and dis misdirections. Magic is science. Yes, as you see in chemistry. Can you show the next slide? As you see in chemistry, you will have studied chemistry. I have not been to school. I haven't studied chemistry, but I know magic. So, a chemical reaction causes the color to change. There is no magic in it. Nothing great about it. You know the chemical compositions. You know the color. But just for a moment, imagine. You do not recognize them as chemicals. They are plain liquids. Now if you mix them, the color changes. Magic. The same is with technology. A press of a button here causes the television to start over there. Or, a swipe on the iPad over here. Just show me the before slide. Before slide. Okay. A swipe on the slide over, on the iPhone over here causes a slide to change behind me. It's technology. Nothing great about it. But again, imagine, you do not know the infrared rays doing their business. You do not know the technology behind it. And the slide changes just by the gesture of my hand. Just by the gesture of my hand. So same technology, for the one who does not know about it, it becomes magic. So, when you're in the know of it, it's technology. And when you're not, magic. Okay, so, Look at the images being projected on the screen right now. Do you find any magic in it? Do you find any magic in it? Not really. Why? Because you know it's technology. You know how this is happening. But if I just capture the projected light on my hand, 
This is magic. Magic is an art that involves science, technology, and sometimes just plain logic. And a magician is the one who uses all this in an illusory manner to entertain the audiences. Yes, a magician entertains the audiences by staging tricks or creating illusions of seemingly impossible or supernatural feats by natural means. You can, call that, you can call these acts as magic tricks, effects or illusions, whatever you want. However, I believe that a better magician is the one who plays with the minds of the audiences. Because it is there where the real magic happens. Because we, we as magicians, we only perform acts. Your mind turns it into magic. Yes, magicians create situations that turn into magic into the minds of the audiences. Just like, next, just like the optical illusion. It's an optical illusion. It's just an image, but the illusion is created by your mind. No one is doing anything. Your mind creates the illusion out of it. So, it's like, your thoughts create your reality and the one who understands that and manipulates audiences thoughts to change their reality and make them believe in the impossible is the true magician. I'll show you how. I've got um, two things out here. I have an iPod and a pencil and I'm going to disappear. Disappear? What do you want me to disappear? And I'm going to make the iPod disappear. Watch very carefully. So one, two, three. Oops. The pencil disappeared. <laughs> Not really. Right now, I just made your mind believe that the pencil has disappeared to create magic. But ideally, it is right here. So now, the iPod, one, two, three, and it's gone. Again, it's just in your mind. So remember, your thoughts create your reality. Your thoughts become your beliefs, and your beliefs become your reality. Your, the power of our belief is tremendous. So, believe in yourself. Thank you. <laughs>